Let's now take a look at how to build these reports using this report wizard tool. As I mentioned earlier, uh, you can build custom reports on either uh, reservation data or transaction data. We're going to take a look at these one at a time, and I'm going to start with how to create a custom report based on reservation data or based on reservations. These are reservations that are booked in the system. They could be for uh, checked out or canceled reservations in the past, or they could be for future reservations or in-house reservations. So to create a custom report, we're going to follow these three main steps. Step one is to create the report and a header for the report. Step two is to select the fields and add filters using those field select, selected fields. Uh, and then step three is to customize the columns, the grouping, or the order features. And that's just more of an aesthetic step at the very end to make sure that the report is uh, easy to read and accessible for your team. So I've got three short videos here that are going to take us through each of these steps uh, using a example report. The report that we're going to create is going to show us booking.com and Expedia.com arrival reservations. So let's take a look at how to uh, create the report and that header information right off the bat. So you're going to click new. And in the report tab, this is where you can add a name for your report. You can indicate that this report is based off of reservations, let you know that it's shown in the menu, and you can add a description for the report. You'll click the next button, and this is where you can customize how the header looks on the finished report. So we add a title, and you can also add variables like the property name or address information. I recommend at least adding that property value there. So a uh, very basic step there to create the report and header information. Like I said, this report is going to be uh, based off of reservation. So we do have to select that in our step number one. And um, it's going to be based off of specific types of reservations. So that's what we're going to look at um, selecting in our step number two. We're going to use the the rate name field to select and filter out the specific reservations we want to look at. We're also going to select the arrival date field, um, and that allows us to create a filter based off of the arrival date. Um, the result is that we want to see future reservations by arrival date uh, that have the booking.com or expedia.com rate plan associated. So we can see those arrivals uh, coming up for future dates, or we can see uh, when those reservations arrived in the past. Great. Uh, so our next video here is gonna take us through those steps of selecting those filters that we want to display and use for, or sorry, selecting those fields we want to display on the report, and also the filters that we need or sorry, the fields that we need for our filter. So to access the fields tab, we'll click next. And that brings us to a list of all these groups of fields that are available to select from. To select individual fields, you'll expand this list and you can scroll down to select the field you need and use the arrow button to move it over to the right hand side. Uh, so that's going to allow us to pick out specific fields that we want to use or want to appear on our finished report. Here I've selected the reservation arrival date, the rate name, uh, the rate pricing, the res ID for that reservation. We can also select guest based information like the guest full name and move that over to our selected fields. Once you pull all of your information over, let's just pull over the status of the reservation here, you'll see them listed on the right hand side. Now we can click the next button. And this now allows us to use those selected fields to build our filter. So you can see those in the report fields available on the left hand side. I'm going to use the expression buttons in the middle to now build my filter. My first filter is to uh, select the arrival date. So I'll click expression and I want the 
guess I want the user to select a arrival date from. So I select greater than and then the parameter and use the prompt date from. And I want the user to also select um, a date to for that arrival date. So I want them to select a date range, date from, and date to. So this is where I can add that date to selection. And now I want to tell room key to pull all reservations. So I'll select and, and I want to specify the reservation um, information. So this is going to be by rate, rate name. The expression is going to be like booking.com or booking in this case. So I want room key to pick out all of the reservations with a rate name that is like booking or with a rate name that is like Expedia. So I'll click expression, like, and the value here is now going to be Expedia and select OK. Now I want to close bracket that because it's an or statement. It could be one or the other. The last thing I want to add in is that I don't want to see any reservations that have been canceled. So I'm going to select and I'm going to use a bracket because I do I want to do a negative expression. So I'm going to select not. And then the status. I want to make sure that the status is not canceled. So we'll make sure that the status is not equal to canceled and click OK. I'm just going to close bracket on the end of that expression um, to make sure that it is complete there. So that is a pretty complex filter, but I just wanted to use that one um, as an example, because it does take you through a couple of different components, we have those prompts, the date from, the date to. So when I generate this report, the user is going to select um, a date from, date to, date range uh, to see all arrivals within that date range. And then I've used an OR statement so that room key knows it's looking for any reservations with a rate name that is like booking.com or that is like Expedia. And I've also told RoomKey that I want to filter out. I do not want to see any reservations that are in canceled status. Great. So now the last step, step number three, is to customize the look of the resulting report. And that allows us to customize uh, the width and organization of columns. We can group the resulting data, and we can also designate an order or sort order for that data. So that's going to be here in step number three. So to access the columns tab from the filter, you're going to click next. And this is where you'll see a list of all of those fields. Now to rearrange the fields, you can click on the field and use these up or down arrows to move that field up or down. In this case, I want to show the arrival departure date beside each other, and I also want to put the res ID and the guest full name at the very beginning. So those should be the first two columns there. The other thing that you can do with these columns is, um, of course, you can view all the available columns here. We can also choose formatting for specific types of data. For example, here with the arrival date, I can designate what format I want that arrival and departure dates to appear as. And you can also customize what that header states. Um, by default, it will say arrival date, but if you just want it to be simplified to arrival and departure, you can use the title column here to designate those as such. Likewise, uh, with the rate formatting, you can choose how you want that number to appear. And you can shorten some other titles here. So I'm just going to shorten credit card holder to uh, CC name. Now, as you're going through and uh, using the title and formatting for these columns, you can also designate the, uh, the width. 
You can choose if a column appears or does not appear. You can remove the check mark from the column checkbox if you do not want that um, field to appear as a column on the resulting report. You can also choose to summarize or uh, add up all of the values in something like a rate uh, column there. Once you're done with customizing the columns, you'll click the next button and that now brings you over to the group by tab where you can choose how to group the resulting data. In this case, I'm going to group them by rate name. Click next. And lastly, I'm going to order this resulting data by arrival date. So it's going to show uh, arrival from most recent to furthest ahead or by arrival date. And you can click finish. Once you've finished creating your report, you will now see it available here. Uh, this one is simply called booking.com and Expedia arrivals. So we've gone through and we've seen how to create a custom report based off of reservations following these three steps. I'm going to pull up a test database with that uh, report, custom report, and show you how to access that now. Great. So um, as, a use, as an admin owner user role, I can access the custom reports from the reports menu and go directly to the report wizard. If I am a user and I do not have access to the report wizard, just the custom reports, I'll be able to see my or load my custom reports from this section here. Once you load your custom reports, you will now see them available to select in this custom reports section. So let's go ahead and take a look at uh, what that uh, custom report looks like for booking.com and Expedia arrivals. You'll notice that it gives me a prompt in the top left hand corner here. So this is going to prompt me to select my date range, starting with the date from. Let's start from today's date. And now it's going to prompt me to look for the date two, so the end of the date range. Let's look at arrivals through to the end of October. So I'll select October 31st and OK. Now that's <clears throat> going to generate a report for me. I'm just going to zoom in here to make it a little easier to see. So here's my resulting report. A couple of features that you'll notice is the name of the hotel and the report name appear on top. The other thing that is displayed on these custom reports is your filtering conditions. So I can see exactly how this filter um, was created. I can also see the parameters that I entered in. So the prompts here, uh, the arrival date is from all reservations arriving between today's date and October 31st. Now the resulting report, um, these are the columns and fields that I have customized. So I can see it's organized with uh, the, or grouped by the rate name. Now, when you are first customizing this information, I do recommend you take a look at the resulting report just so in case you need to make any adjustments. Uh, one thing that I can see here that I might want to adjust is the um, column width for the rate name. You can see that it's a little bit cut off here, even though it's grouped. So I might want to adjust that width. The other thing I might want to adjust is the width for the CC name or credit card holder name and the status. Both of these are also cut off at the end. Another thing that you might want to note, um, in this particular report, we did create it and um, ask to have a sum for the rate column. On second thought, I think that that may not be applicable. Instead, what I might want to do is have a count of how many of these reservations are arriving for each one of these um, uh, rate plans. So I want to see maybe a count of two reservations arriving with the booking.com rate, two for the Expedia hotel collect rate, and a count of three for the Expedia prepaid rate. So it's always good to take a look at the resulting report to make sure that it looks um, 
appropriate. Of course, we can go back and repeat step number three to then um, make it a little bit easier to read. Great. Let me just close that report. I'm going to go and make those adjustments from the report wizard here in the reports menu. It just expands my list and take a look at the booking.com and Expedia arrivals report. And instead of creating new or running the report, I'm going to click modify. Now, one of the things I wanted to do was to add a count instead of a sum. So I'm going to sh select show counter from this report tab. And I'm going to skip ahead using the next button all the way to the columns tab. And this is where I can adjust those column widths. So for example, here, I might want to change the um, rate name. We'll make that column wider so that it doesn't cut off the rate name. I might do the same for the card holder name and the reservation status. The other thing that I want to do is remove that sum. I don't need to see the sum of the rate. Uh, I just wanted to see the count so I can remove that here. Of course, you can also make any of those adjustments to your group by or order by if you'd like to. Once you're finished with your um, modifications, you go ahead and click finish. And from the report wizard, you can actually run this report again. You can select the report and click run. That will give me my prompts once again. So my date from, let's look at the same date range from today's date to the end of October, October 31st. Great. So now I've adjust, made those adjustments. You can see that it has uh, expanded my report a little bit more. It makes it a little bit easier to see. So I've got my booking.com rate and I've got two records counted, two records counted and a total of three there. So in total, in between today and the end of the month, I should expect seven reservations for my booking.com and Expedia arrivals.